Welcome back. For those who are always worried about crashing stock markets, the logical alternatives are property and term deposits. To understand how to get exposure to a big building in a big city without owning it outright, we have Jason Vulich, CEO of Centurion Property Funds. Mate, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Was that a good way of putting it? Oh, it's a fantastic. Yeah. You know, I, I, I know a lot of people don't understand commercial property, uh, sure. so I thought, let's have a look at what the deal you're actually doing now. So explain to us what's going on at the moment in your business. Sure. So our latest fund is a single asset fund, so we usually buy assets in that 50 to $100 million range, right. and they'll go into individual funds. So we have about 45 assets around Australia, over 28 funds. Yeah. Um, so this particular fund, which we just opened this week, is buying half of Channel 7's headquarters in Australian Technology Park, mm. which is about three kilometres south of the Sydney CBD towards the airport. Yeah. Um, it's a three. It's a pretty new building. I, yeah. I know. I did a speech there recently. I parked underneath. That's it was, right. It looked brand new. Yeah, it's How three three it? year old building. Three years, okay. um, it's a two hundred million dollar asset. Yeah. Um, main tenants Channel Seven, Seven West Media. Yeah. Um, next biggest tenant is state government. So you got really high quality tenants in there. Yeah. Um, and the lease terms are extremely long. So uh, average lease terms are about thirteen years, which is which is a long lease for commercial property. Okay, who were, who were the original owners? Um, the the building who was are the original yeah, look the the building was developed by a group including Channel Seven, mm. um, and some other developers as well. So yeah. they're selling down a half stake to us yeah. for circa a hundred million dollars. Okay, so effectively this fund going to own half of this building. Okay, so. So you then go to the market and ask people for an expressions of interest to, to invest in the... In the in exactly. The, yeah. So we opened the fund this week. We've got a product disclosure statement, PDS, yeah. Yeah. which is a detailed document that goes through the, the investment, any risks, um, opportunities and so forth. Yeah. Um, and investors can come in and apply. And the, yeah. fund, uh, the fund is open until the end of November yeah. and then we purchase the asset. Okay. So it, it, when you go through the document, do you see a value for a unit, or do you just nominate the amount of money you yeah, want to put so into it? Yeah, so our minimum investment is fifty thousand um, dollars. We have a lot of investors that invest a lot more than that, yeah. up so into the 50, millions. One unit equal fifty thousand. Each unit's a dollar. Minimum minimum application is fifty thousand one dollar units. Okay, fine. Yeah. All right. So, so you get pulled in. How do you work out basically who gets accepted? Because some buildings obviously would be oversubscribed and some would mm. be undersubscribed. What's your feeling on this one? Look, this one, we've already got over 200 reservations of interest. So people have put in their forms, said they're looking to invest this amount of money. Yeah. So that's that's a you know, it's a pretty strong response. Okay. Um, usually, um, it's either first, you know, usually first in, first served. Yeah. So um, if we, 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 we can close the fund early mm. once we hit our application amount. Okay. So, all right. So uh, obviously Stokes and, and, and mm. his various partners mm. are selling half the mm. building. All of a sudden, these people in the fund will own it. How long will you own it for? Yeah, look, it's um, the fund term as set out in the PDS is five years. Yeah. Um, we do have some flexibility, so we would have a vote of investors if we think it's a good idea to extend for two years. Yeah. If investors vote to do that, we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a set time, which is seven years, where no investor can is locked in the fund any longer than seven years. Okay, um, so, so the worst case scenario for someone who wanted to know when they're making up seven years would probably That's be right. the worst. And it's going to be usually somewhere between four and seven now years. Now what happens if, if the market's really, the prop commercial mm. market is booming after four years? Yep. Would you put it to your group, are we interested in selling at, at what we think is the no, top of the market? Definitely. So overall our funds, I think we've sold assets after three years yep. and, we, and investors have chosen to hold on for ten years. Yep. So. Um, obviously, you look, you look to sell when the market's peaking yeah. uh, and buy when it's, when it's not so good. So, um, yeah, we're very flexible and, and we're always making recommendations to investors when we think it's the best time to okay. sell. So, you and I have been talking basically about the capital gain. Sure. What is the, the income you get over those, yeah. those years? So, that with, these, uh, with these funds, you get a quarterly distribution paid directly into your bank account. Yeah. And that just comes from the rental uh, income flows from the tenants that are leasing the building. Mm. So, um, in this particular fund, first year forecast is 8.7% per annum mm. and second year is 9.1. So yeah. pretty strong uh, returns for a, you know, a very high quality asset. So you're asset. saying if, if you put 100,000 bucks into this, on, on your projection, yeah. and that's based on ma making sure, sure. That, in fact we'll talk about what can bring out yeah, done sure. or yeah. what can make it better, uh, an 8.7% return. Correct. All right. And that would be from the, the rents. Now if, if, if there was another GFC, yeah. I guess, if we should explain, is it possible that the rents will come down? Or is a tenant locked in? Well, the tenant is locked in, so yeah. um, 
in particular with this asset with very long leases, mm -hmm. um, Seven West is actually out to 2029. Yep. So they've got 16 years to run on their lease. So yep. that's long enough to get through yes. through the cycle. Um, the state government one? Um, that's about eight years. Oh, yeah. um, the they, and yeah. they have they have th um, an average of about 3.3% annual reviews, fixed reviews every year. Yep. So it's very hard for the rent to go down. Um, and th when these sort of leases, long-term leases are in the building. Okay, so, you, so there's that kind of income, there's the capital gain. When you sell it, mm. how do you actually divvy up the capital gain? Uh, look, it's just um, based on your percentage holding in the, mm. in the, uh, in the fund. So we usually t would take the asset to the market and yeah. try and get the best price, have a, have a, a competitive campaign, yeah. um, and then we'd sell the asset. Um, investors get um, their inv original investment back in any capital, their share of the capital gain. Okay, uh, and so, um, is there anything th that you think people need to understand before they go into this? Look, probably the only, the, the, the main thing people ever have to understand with unlisted property is lack of liquidity. Yeah. So if you're investing, you're investing in that time frame of say four to seven years. Yeah. Um, with property, it's not an asset class that you should get in and out of. You know, there's upfront costs, including stamp duty, um, acquisition costs. It's just like buying a house. Yep. You know, you don't yep. want to buy your house and sell it six months later. No. Um, so you need to hold it for that that period to make back those costs and make that capital gain as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess the, the most important point also to understand is that this is um, like all investments. It's not a term deposit. It's mm. a little bit more risky. That's right. GFC. It could be some troubles. But at least in this case, I've seen the building. Mm -hmm. It's actually a quality building. That's right. And so you, you hope that the, the, the potential challenges would be small compared to the upside. That, that's right. And we like, we give access to smaller investors to these high quality, you know, larger buildings, longer leases, high quality tenants. So yeah. things can go wrong. Yeah. But obviously, the, the higher quality the tenants and the longer the leases, you've got less chance for that happening. And there's an alternative as well. If people don't want to go into that, they can take a punt on your listed vehicle. That's which right. Is, the money you make out of it. Mm goes into the profits of Centuria, yeah, so which is a listed Yeah, so Centuria well. Capital is a, obviously a listed um, fund manager. Yeah. So we've, we've got a financial services division, which is insurance, mortgages, friendly society bonds, yeah. and then we've got the property funds division. So we've got about two billion of funds under management. Right, Jason, thanks for joining us. Thank and you. Explain thanks to us a lot. And good luck with it. Thank you. After the break, we'll be talking about mortgages and whether there really is a housing bubble with Michael Daniels from Smartline. <laughs>